So we're going to start with mixing the greens that we're going to be using for both the of the demos, both the one for lesson two and for lesson three. We want to have at least four different values and temperatures and intensities of green. And so up here in the corner you see phthalo blue and the dioxazine violet or Egyptian violet if you're using Williamsburg. So to make two darks, I want a warm and a cool of the dark. So I'm going to take Terra Vert and I'm going to add the dioxazine purple to one and phthalo blue to the other. Then I'm going to mix several lighter greens as well. If you remember from that earlier demo, one of my favorite lighter greens is a mixture of terra verde and cinnabar green light. So I'm going to lay that out, and that mixture is usually about half and half. Then I'm going to want at least two, if not three, light greens as well, a medium green and a light green. So I'm going to go on and put the cinnabar green light out because that's going to be the base for all of those. And I want to, in one, add some of the Italian green ochre. Remember, it's really similar to yellow ochre. Again, almost half and half, roughly two-thirds, one-third. And that's going to create a nice warm green for the highlight on our tree slash cauliflower. And then in this other one over here, I want to neutralize that cinnabar green light a bit. And I'm going to use some of the alizarin orange mixed with white to do that. So the alizarin orange mixed with a tiny little bit of red and white so that it's almost the same value as that cinnabar green light is going to make a color that will take the edge off of that green and make it a little less intense. It's a little too intense right now. So I'm also going to need some white in order to make that mixture. What I'm mixing is the equivalent of that Montserrat orange color that I love so much that Williamsburg makes. But I want to show you how to make it from scratch. So we're going to start with some white for that. And I'm going to take about that much of the Indian, uh, Indian yellow, the Alizarin orange and mix it in with the white. You see how yellow it goes? It's still fairly intense because it has not tipped over that point where it's going to go chalky and dull. So I don't want it to go chalky and dull. Again, because we're mixing color, wipe that knife a lot. And then I need just a little tiny bit, about half as much, of the Fanchon Red. And that is going to make it somewhat pinky. I may still need to add a little white to get it to the same value as the Cinnabar and as the Montserrat Orange would be. Okay, you see how orangey it's going. Almost a more intense, really, even than orange sherbet. So we have a nice orange right there. So I'm going to take, mm, I would say that's about a fourth of what's on there for the cinnabar. Because I want to knock the edge off of that neutralize it some. And it will be more intense than if I had mixed white with yellow ochre 
or white with the green ochre. It will also be tied to those other colors that we're using because it has a common element in them. Notice that these greens on the top row all have cinnabar green light in them. So they are going to relate. There's color harmony going on there. Okay, so there we have a nice sort of pinkish green, tannish color that is going to be a great neutral that will relate to the other greens that we have on there. Again, wipe that knife thoroughly before you go to mix the next color. And I'm going to take a little bit of that, not nearly as much this time, and knock just the top edge off of that cinnabar so that it is not straight out of the tube green. Again, that makes the colors speak to each other a little bit more. So it visually will connect with that one we just mixed, but there's a strong contrast because it's still more green than that initial one. And wipe that knife. I think I even need to wipe it one more time. To mix the cinnabar and the green ochre, may have to adjust just a little bit. Maybe need a little more green ochre. We're going to have to see as we go. It's going to make a nice light sort of warm yellow green. But something that's a little bit more realistic. A little closer to light hitting tree leaves. Cinnabar green is just a little too neon to use straight out of the tube. So this is a great color to use for leaves that are being hit by sunlight. So there we have our light warm green. And we are going to go to a light cool green in just a second. But notice how different these two are that the this one is lighter in value a little bit more neutral this one is darker in value and warmer so here we have our cinnabar and terraver mix and it's going to make a cooler light green slightly darker in value than the one we just mixed and cooler. So every time you make a value change I want you to think about also making a temperature change. And wipe the knife. Don't omit that step or you'll make a giant mess. So I'm going to put a good deal of purple in this one because I want it to go very purpley green more purple even than green. So this is the Terra Verde with the dioxazine purple. And it makes a good sh warmer shadow color. And you'll see what I mean when I s get the mass tone spread out a little bit. And you compare it to the one that's going to be mixed with blue. So this is real purpley. And again, it's going to relate to the one we just mixed because it has the Terra Verde in it, as does that. And our last color that we're mixing here is the Thalo Blue. Again, a good chunk of it because I want there to be a distinct difference between these two darks. One is more bluish and one is more purplish. These two you really do need to mix well because those Thalos and Dioxazines are strong staining colors and if they're not mixed well you're going to have chunks of very intense very strong color in with your other colors. So there we have a bluish shadow color. Now I also want to have a little bit of Terra Verde. It's just Terra Verde. 
with a slight little bit of the purple mixture to take the edge off of the Terravere. But I don't want to darken it much. So after I carefully wipe my knife, I'm going to take just a tiny little bit like that and mix it in so that I have a dark green. It is still distinctly green, but not quite as out of the tube green. Maybe a tiny little bit more. Then it will again connect and relate better. Okay, there is our other dark green. So there we have it. Those are the colors that we're going to use. We've got some very light greens, some medium light greens, moving into medium green and very dark green. So we're going to use these in combination in both of these demo paintings to create first our still life study and then our more finished painting. So in painting our still life, we are going to start with this time a toned ground. So make sure you have toned the ground of your panel or canvas so that it has a warm yellow ochre base. And remember you can do that either with oil paint and let it dry overnight or with acrylic and it will dry within 15 minutes or so. Either one is fine, but we want to start with that toned ground to give us that middle value to begin working with. So make sure you do that before you get started. And as usual, I have it mounted on a piece of foam core so that it's fairly easy to move around and turn in order to work. So in blocking this in, I want us to remember that we want to try to get at least two different colors or values for each of those major shapes and that we have in that still life the background, the base ground, that's two, we have the shadow, that's three, the shadowed trunk, four, we have another shadow area in the upper left, Five, and the highlighted areas in the top of the cauliflower which becomes six. So they're no more than about six or seven shapes. And just as we have done in the past in earlier um, work, we're going to block it in with those major colors, major shapes to begin with. So for that warmer area that is on the left hand side of the cauliflower. And the reason that I chose the cauliflower is it is very close in shape to our tree that we're going to be painting. And I want you to notice how thinly I am putting on that warmer dark, that purpley dark. I want to be able to see some of the yellow through it. So it should be super thin, almost transparent, translucent. That is intentional. Rembrandt said that as you paint the darks, they should be thin and transparent. That that gives you the, some of the richest surface quality in the painting. So that is the warmer side of the shadow. Then I'm going to wipe the knife off. And I'm going to get the cooler side of the shadow, which is our phthalo blue and Italian terra verde mixture. This is again the base of the cauliflower. As and similar to the base of our tree. So this part of the shadow 
is of the trunk is going to be bluer. Again, I want it really thin. Really thin. Keep it transparent. Keep it thin. But you can see here the difference between the purpley green and the blue green. That's going to give us a change and a shift from one side of that underbelly of the broccoli to the other. Now I want to get that sort of middle green, our straight, almost straight, Italian terra verde. Because that's going to go as the base, the main underlying value for a lot of this in-between area. I need to block it in and it can be a little thicker. Don't get all caught up in details yet. Just as in our earlier block ends, keep it simple. It's okay if this gets a little thin in spots. And I can tell I'm going to have to mix up some more of that medium green. I'm running out already. So I am just blocking in that basic shape. Let me get some more of that before I go any further since I'm definitely going to need a good bit more. And I can quickly add, remember we added just a tiny little bit of the diopsazine purple to take that edge off. I need a little tiny bit more. Just to bring it to a noticeable difference. Again, I hardly ever use any of the greens straight out of the tube. Not even old Terra Verde. It's just a little bit too much it doesn't relate well to other colors unless you add some of them into it for color harmony. And we'll wipe that off. And then we can get a little bit more because we have shape up there for the broccoli. You need a little thicker right here where it's starting to get a little thin. I can bring that down onto the dark. Remember you want to work from dark to light for the most part. So now think about the color of that base, this base ground. It's a really light green because the sun is hitting it strongly, but there's also a shadow at the base of the broccoli as well. And that shadow is going to be the same Terra Verde mixture. So you want to go on and lay some of that in And there should not be a hard edge where it meets the dark of the base of the broccoli. I want you to start slowly thinking about edges of things. And the shadow on this side is not quite as large as it is on that left side. It does come up about the same distance. So make sure those sides kind of match on the left and the right. So 
there we've got the shadow blocked in. It's at the base of the broccoli. Now we can get the ground that the broccoli is resting on. And that is our lovely old mixture of cinnabar and terra verde. So now we can think about where comes up to right about there. We can block it in really thinly and if you want to just like we did before you can keep it somewhat isolated and leave an edge between the colors or you can go back and scrape it out if you need to and come back in with some of that terra verde so either method will work but remember right now this is a block in so we're not going to try and make it perfect See where I'm going to need to mix some more of that too. get this left hand side and the main purpose of doing it from a simple still life object first is to have something you can control now, um, mentioned in the concept video that one of my favorite landscape painters, painters period, is Claude Lorraine from the Baroque period. And Lorraine was known to set up his still lives, his um, landscapes by doing still lives first. That many of his landscapes were created totally from the imagination and from still lives that he set up at the dinner table and he would rearrange the vegetables from the dinner table into pleasing landscapes. So that is in essence what we're doing here and I'm going to turn this so that I can get to these edges here and get right up in there. So feel free to turn your board around. As y'all know, I don't tend to put my paintings into an easel, the smaller ones. I feel like I have more control when I'm working flat. And that's true whether I'm working with a brush or with a knife. So I'm also going to take this up into here, which I'm taking off camera. Sorry about that. And remember from previous lessons, if you pick up a little bit of that other color, don't worry about it. You can always remove it with the smaller knife. It is not a biggie. Not at all. And I can take the knife and get right up in there on it. Or I can leave that space naked if I want to. Depends on how you want to handle it as a block-in. 
but I do not want to see lots of smoothed over canvases and panels. I want to see it quick and rough so that we can really tell that you are working fast and you're blocking in those basic shapes and not getting caught up into details. So I need to take this on this side up to the same height. So if I've gone over into an area that I didn't want to, remember you can go back and you can scrape out. And the easiest way to scrape out is to use that smaller knife, the number 81. So if I want to scrape out right here, I can push out and break that edge up a little bit. And then take some of the Terra Verit mixture, which is what that color was, and put it back on. And I'm going to get the bigger knife to really do that. dance back and forth. The color in the background is very similar to the color in the shadow of the cauliflower, of the broccoli. It is that warm and cool blue. The background of our still life box is a kind of medium value blue, but when it has the light hitting it, it goes very, very dark. So we're going to use the bluish purple on these outer edges. And then we're going to come back in with our purpley green. That should have been bluish green, sorry. Apparently can't paint and talk at the same time. And because the light is direct and overhead, that warmer purpley green is going to be almost dead center. Then we have that same bluey green on the other side. And just as we did at the base of the broccoli, I want you to leave it thin. so that you can actually see what the color is. If you leave it too thick, it's going to dull the color because these are dye colors. It won't look as rich. To turn it to get down to this little bottom edge. There we go and then wipe that knife and notice how many times I'm wiping every single time I change color then for the warmer purpley green it's gonna go right there in the center now these are both about the same value. They're not, there's not a change in value there. And I'm not making the place where they meet a hard edge either. Because that would be visually not very interesting. Watch your edges. Make them irregular. Don't leave them hard and stiff.
turn again. And one last time right here. So again, there's not a hard edge between the bluey green and the more purpley green. And those are fairly thin. So the what value and color that we have left is that lighter green. It's the only other one I'm going to put on here because this is a block in. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. It is a guide for us to use in our second more detailed landscape painting, which is where we're going to use those other greens I mixed up. But if you remember, I scraped back in that shadow, so I need to go back in here and put in my dark again. It's my dark green disappeared there a little bit. And you may have noticed that the shadow on the broccoli is not as dark right here. So you can break that up a little bit if you want to and soften it to indicate that this area is not why it is dark? Because there is more light coming down on this side than on the other. That outer edge of the shadow is going to be both lighter and warmer. So the last thing that we have left is that warm green that we're going to put as a highlight where the light is hitting the top of the broccoli. So we're going to use this one that was a mixture of green ochre and cinnabar green light. So you want to get enough paint on the knife that it's loaded, but not so much that you're going to um, ice the cake with a whole new color. So the way that the light is hitting it, it's just that top layer so I've caught dark color on my knife, and I'm going to wipe that off. Yes, you're wasting some paint, but wasting a little bit of paint is better than making a big smeary mess. And eventually, you'll not be picking up that much paint. Keep your touch really light. If you start to pick up a lot of dark, you can wipe it off. And sometimes you can wipe it off without getting rid of all of the paint you had on there. So this whole top part of the broccoli is actually very light. That's where that light, direct overhead light, is casting down onto the form. that final value we have to get in there to give that feeling of direct overhead lighting. Broad daylight direct overhead lighting. One of the joys of being able to switch back and forth between hands is being able to get into these little tiny areas over here. And we're going to keep it very simple. We're going to add just a little tiny bit more detail if you want to in the second kind of tier right here. 
And then we are going to stop because at that point we have our color block for our broccoli. And in just a minute, when we start working on our final big demo, bigger demo, more detailed demo, you'll notice how really similar those two forms are. So I need some cleanup in here where I've dragged a little bit of phthalo in there. So even if you're working with a brush, if you've got some color in there that's not intentional, you can always go back with a knife and scrape it out and fix those details. So there we have it. That is our color block in. I want to soften this edge that I was talking about on the broccoli. Um, there is our color block in of our still life object and we're going to use this as a jumping off point for our tree in strong sunlight. You can also go back here and tweak things as you notice which I just noticed that it's darker right there. Um, we're going to use this as the basis for our tree that is in broad sunlight. Broccoli is very tree shaped and we are going to pivot off of that and use that as a way to study the basic forms we're going to be working with. Same colors, same size, we're going to go a little bit more detailed in the next piece.